What is going on everyone? My name is Coda Moore and welcome back to episode 14 of the New Beginner Java Game Programming Tutorial Series. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to implement keyboard input into our game so we're able to move our character around the screen by pressing keys on the keyboard. But before we can do that, we have to add a couple of things to make things work and to make things easier for us in the future. What we're going to do is we are going to pass an instance of this game class right here to every single one of the states in our game. And we're doing that because it's going to be very useful in just a little bit, but for right now just follow along with me. So go ahead and go into your state class right here and you're going to want to add a protected game object called game right here uh, at the top of your class. And we are going to also add a constructor to the state class, so public state. And the constructor of the state class is going to take in a game object called game and in it we're just going to set this.game equal to game. This should all be simple, you should know what this does. Constructor the state class takes in a game object and just sets the protected object up here equal to it. Now, since we changed the state class to have an actual constructor, that means any class that extends a state must be changed. So go into your game state and then your menu state and any other state you have, and what we have to do is in the constructor of it, take in a game object called game, and then before you do anything else, call the super method of your state class and pass in game as a parameter. And remember, this super method right here calls the constructor of whatever class you've extended. So it's calling the constructor of the state class, giving it game as a parameter. And don't forget to import your game class in all of these classes as well. Now we're going to have to go ahead and do that to every other state that we have. So for me, I just have a menu state, so take in a game game and call the super method with game as a parameter. And that'll fix all of your errors in there. Make sure to import your game class as well. So now everything's back to normal, except we still have an error in our game class right here. And it's where in our init method, where we initialize both or all of our states of our game. And that's because the constructors of them now take in a game object as a parameter. So we are already in a game class. So what object do we pass it? Well, since we are in the game class right here and we're running it, we just have to use this class and pass this in as a parameter. That's referring to this game class right here. And that'll pass it an instance of this game class. I'm hoping that you guys understood that. I'm hoping that it wasn't too difficult. All we did was pass a game object into all of the states that we have. And again, we're going to be using those in just a bit. For right now, let's move on to getting keyboard input. We are going to go ahead and create a new class. So right click on your main package, go up to new class, and we are going to name this class key manager. It's essentially going to manage all of our keyboard stuff. And I'm going to put it in the dot input package of my game. Go ahead and create the key manager class. And this key manager class must implement the key listener class. Now key listener is a class that Java has and it essentially allows us to access the keyboard and tell what keys are and aren't being pressed. Go ahead and import that key listener class and then whenever you implement the key listener class, Java makes you have three methods. So in Eclipse, you can hover over the error and select add unimplemented methods or you can type them in yourself. So whenever we implement the key listener class, we must have a public void key pressed, key released, and key typed methods. We don't have to worry about the key type method at all for right now. We're going to be using that in the far future, but not right now. All we have to worry about now is the key pressed and key released methods. The key pressed method is called whenever the user presses a key on the keyboard. So if I press the spacebar, this key pressed method is going to be called. The key released method does the opposite. Whenever I let go of a key on my keyboard, this method is going to be called. So whenever I stop pressing a key and I release it, this key released method is going to be called. So we have to develop a way to store whether a key is or isn't being pressed. And it can be a bit tricky to understand, but it's actually extremely simple to implement. First, we're going to go ahead and create the key manager constructor, so public key manager. And we are going to create an array up here, so it's going to be a private boolean array called keys. In the constructor, we're going to set the keys boolean array equal to a new boolean array, and we're going to give it a size of 256. That should be plenty for right now. So how exactly is this going to work? A boolean is a true and a false value, so how in the world can we store every single key on the keyboard in this boolean array? Now, in order to understand the way that we're going to be doing this, you have to understand how a keyboard works. Basically, every single key on your keyboard actually has an ID attached to it. It's called a key code. So every single key on your keyboard has a key code, and it's simply a number. So say if I press the letter A, the letter A on your keyboard has the key code number of 123. It's not really 123, I'm just using that as an example. 
So say the A key on your keyboard has an ID or a key code of 123. 123. What we're going to do is whenever that key is pressed, so whenever the key A is pressed or ID 123, then we're going to set the keys array at that ID, so 123, the index of this array, 123, equal to true. And we're going to do the opposite in the key released method. We're going to set the key at whatever key code ID that key is to false. And that will store whether the key is pressed or not. True if it is being pressed, false if it's not. So let's go ahead and actually implement this. In the key pressed method here, all we have to do is say our keys array at, and then we're going to use this parameter here. It gives us a key event which I've named E. So keys at E dot get key code is going to get the key code number of the key that was pressed. So the keys array at whatever index the key code is, we're just going to set equal to true. And we are going to do the exact same thing in the key released method. So keys at e.getKeyCode is going to be equal to false. It is no longer being pressed. That's essentially it. That's the basics of a key manager. We're able to now tell if a key is or is not being pressed by true being pressed, false not being pressed. So let's expand on this a little bit more. All we want to do right now is move the player around the screen. That means we need to detect whether the arrow keys are being pressed or WASD if you want to do it that way. So below where we declared this boolean array, we're just going to have a few public booleans. They're going to be up, down, left, and right. And these are simply booleans, and if they're true, it means move in that direction. So for our player, if up equals true, that means our player should be moving up. And all we have to set these equal to is if the arrow key is being pressed. So if we're pressing the up arrow key, we have to set this up boolean variable equal to true. Now in order for this to be completely reliable, we have to add a tick method to this key manager, so public void tick. This is just like the, the one in our game state or our player class. We're going to be calling this constantly many times a second. And all we have to do in this tick method is simply set the up variable equal to true if we're holding the up arrow key or the W key, if you want to do it that way. Or set it to false if that key isn't being pressed, and do the same for down, left, and right. It's actually very simple to do because our keys array is already storing if a key is down or not. So we're going to set the up boolean variable equal to the keys array at some key code. Now in order to get a key code on the keyboard, you're going to use the key event dot and then you can scroll through this huge list of keys. Basically, any key starts with vk underscore and then the key name. So the up arrow would be vk underscore up. The W key would be VK underscore W, and stuff like that. Now, I want to use WASD controls, so I'm going to leave it at W for to go up. You can use arrow key controls as well. Now, we're just going to copy this line down and essentially do it for the other three parameters, or down, left, and right variables. So up, or up, down, left, and right. And again, you can set these equal to the arrow keys. For right now, I'm going to do WASD, though. So down would be the S key, left would be the A key, and right would be the D key. So whenever the tick method is called, we are simply updating the up, down, left, and right variables, whether the player should be moving in those directions, based on if the WASD keys are being pressed, or you could have chosen the up, left, down, and right arrow keys as well. So I hope you understand that. I'm going to be going over all this at the very end of the tutorial if you missed something. For right now, let's just get this working with our player. So to get to doing that, what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to go into our display class here. And remember how we made a getter for the get canvas? Well, we're going to want to do a similar thing, but for the J frame. So public J frame, get, whoop, get frame. And we're just going to return the frame. And that's because we have to access this J frame outside of the display class. So J frame, get frame is just going to return our J frame that we have up here in the display class. That's all we have to change there. That way we're able to access it. Now, in our game here, where we initialize the display, right underneath it, we have to do display dot get frame, so get the J frame, dot add key listener. And this takes a parameter of the key listener. Well, we just made one. Our class is called key manager and it implements the key listener class. So that's what we have to add. Of course, before we have to do that, we have to create an object or an instance of our key manager. So up here at the top of our class here, I'm just going to uh, initialize a private key manager called key manager and then right here in the constructor I'm going to set key manager equal to a new key manager and I'm just going to initialize it like so and make sure to implement or I'm sorry import your class all right there we go 
Now, where we just wrote this piece of code, display.getFrame.addKeyListener, we just want to add our key list or our key manager object. So what we're doing here, after we create the display, we're getting the JFrame of our display, the actual display window, and we're adding a key listener. This adds a key listener, or essentially allows us to access the keyboard. And we pass it in our key manager, which we just created up here. And we're able to do that because our key manager class implements a key listener class. So that's that. So to test this, let's go ahead and inside of our key manager right here, underneath the key pressed method, whenever a key is pressed, I'm just going to do system.out.println, and I'm going to pray, uh, pressed like so. And I'm going to open up my console here and I'm going to go ahead and run my game. So I have my game here and if I press the arrow keys, nothing happens. We're not getting the word pressed or anything. Well, that's because of a little bug that we have inside of our display class again. Right here, we're beneath where we set the canvas's size, we have to do canvas.setFocusable and we have to set that to false. This is very important. Now, it might work on your computer if you don't do this, but on some computers, it won't work at all. So it's important that you have canvas.setFocusable false. And that's essentially going to make it so that our JFrame is the only thing that can have focus. Basically allows the application to focus itself instead of the part that we're drawing on. It can get a bit confusing. But let's try running our program again. Here's my console. I'm going to run the program. And if I click on the screen here and then start pressing a keys, we get pressed. So whenever I press a key, it says pressed. That's perfect. That means our key, our key manager is working and the key pressed method is being called. So now that we know that it's working, let's implement this into our player class. Now the player class is going to need some type of access to our key manager object so it can access the variables in there, up, down, left, and right. So uh, at the bottom of my game class, below this uh, while running loop below my run method, I'm just going to have a public key manager method called get key manager, and that's just going to return our key manager object. And you should, of course, know how getters work. This is just going to simply return our key manager object so other classes can access it. All right, that's all we're going to need to do. Let's go into our player class and finally, well, let me open up my player class and finally get this player class working, at least for now. We are going to change the way that we do movement in the very near future to be more object oriented, but for right now, I just want to do some quick test code to prove that everything's working. So we're going to be changing the way that we do this in the near future. Anyways, let's follow along. Before we can do anything, our player class must take in a game object called game, however, because we need to be able to access that. So above here, we're going to have a private game object called game, and we're just going to set this dot game equal to game. And we need that so we can access the key manager and access all of our input stuff. So of course we're going to get an error in our game state. We just have to pass in game to our player. All right, that'll fix all of those errors. Let's get back to programming our player. Now the tick method is where we update any variables for an object. So in the tick method is where we're going to handle our input and move our player. Basically, and again, this is not the proper way to do it. We're going to be changing it in the future, but please follow along. We're going to do if game dot get key manager so the key manager class that we have dot up so if the up boolean is true if we should be moving up then what we're going to do is we're just going to do y minus equals and then we'll do say three now why am i subtracting from y well remember if you looked at a coordinate plane in computer graphics not a regular one on paper but if we remember back to the video where i talked about coordinates on the screen the y axis increases as it goes down so to move a player up, we have to subtract from the Y position. Now, I'm going to be lazy, and I'm just going to copy all of these methods right here. I'm going to copy it four times. So we're going to have up, down, and to go down, we have to add to the Y axis, because Y axis going down is plus. Then we're going to have left, and to go left, we have to subtract from the X variable. And then finally, to go right, to go right we have to uh, add to the X variable. And that should be pretty self-explanatory if you remember how the coordinate system of screens work. Basically, if the up arrow is being pressed, we're going to subtract from the Y value to move the position of the player image up. Again, we're going to change the way that we do this, but in theory, this should work. Okay, sorry guys, I missed a huge important thing, a gigantically important thing. Back in our game class here, in our tick method, before we tick the state, 
we have to tick our key manager. So do key manager tick. I completely forgot about that. That's very important. If you don't have key manager tick, it won't work. So make sure you put that in in your game class before you tick your state. That's very important. My bad, I forgot to do that. So our player class now, in theory, if we run the program, it should work. Click on the screen in case uh, to make sure it's all working. And if you press your WASD keys or arrow keys, whatever ones that you chose, your player will be moving around. This is awesome! We have movement in our game. It's not just a boring player image displayed on the screen. This is perfect. I am in love with this movement. Of course, we can make this game much better than just a randomly moving player. But for right now, we finally finished input. Now there isn't quite enough time in this video for me to recap everything, but it should be fairly simple to understand if you look at the code and if you try and figure out and understand how things are working, make sure that you understand arrays of course or else you're not going to get the key manager class. If you have any problems whatsoever, visit my website and you can get the source code to look it over and make sure you have no problems. If you have any questions or anything, down below in the comments or on Twitter is the best way to reach me for questions. Thanks all so much for watching, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial where we're going to be doing a lot of stuff.